I don't know a soldier that doesn't get up every morning and just take pride in putting on their uniform. And the Army has developed this wonderful system of then distinguishing soldiers among each other. And they do that through the use of tabs and badges. Generally there are two major categories of tabs. Uh, one would be the individual tabs uh, and I would break those down into two categories. You have the leadership tabs which are clearly special forces, ranger, sapper, which requires a qualification course that you would have to attend to earn that tab. Uh, a second individual tab is what we call maybe the qualification tab where you would uh, compete in some type of competition such as the President's 100. The second category of tab would, is what I would call the unit designation tab. Uh, such as Airborne, Mountain, Honor Guard. And those are authorized to be worn with a specific shoulder sleeve insignia uh, representing the major mission of that unit. Every one of those tabs means you work very hard and very diligently to meet all the qualifications that go with it. When I see a soldier wearing a tab, whether it be a individual tab or a unit tab, it identifies to me that soldier has special skills, or belonging to a unit that has a very unique and special mission. I am First Sergeant Stanley Burris, 11 Bravo Infantryman, and I wear the Airborne Tab. I am Captain Andrew Robinson. I am an 11 Alpha Infantry Officer, and I wear the Airborne Tab. The Airborne Tab is something uh, that's on the unit patch of historic Airborne units and those units wear that patch uh, to honor their own history and to show their own soldiers that they're part of something special. The Airborne Tab actually was proposed and originated around the beginning of the Second World War. The 82nd Airborne Division was the 82nd Division in World War I, then reactivated to become the 82nd Airborne Division uh, when they decided to have paratroopers in the United States Army in World War II. Just knowing that I'm just a small part of something so great that our Army has, that's an awesome feeling. The Airborne Soldiers now have a great history to rely on. Uh, we're standing on the soldiers of giants uh, that went before us. An Airborne unit can infiltrate, go ahead and set up uh, outpost. Uh, it's an extremely fast way to get a lot of people on the ground at one time, right in the middle of the enemy's area of operations. You jump from something you know into something you don't know. And that's the epitome of being an Airborne Soldier. One second you're safe inside the aircraft, the next second you're in a combat zone. It's not about not having fear, it's about overcoming your fear. Stepping out, that first step, uh, floating down to the ground in the cool air, that's definitely my favorite part of being airborne. I would jump every second of every day if I had the opportunity. The Army is the only uh, service that wears the airborne tab. Traditionally, the soldiers that are in airborne units are the ones that want to push themselves harder and want to serve their country at the tip of the spear. If you're that kind of person who wants to be a part of that, uh, then everyone is, is for you. I'm Command Sergeant Major Jeffrey Stitzel. I'm an infantryman, and I have the Honor Guard tab. Private First Class Francisco Jimenez, 11 Bravo Infantry. I have the Honor Guard tab. The Honor Guard is a special unit that conducts our nation's most important ceremonies. We conduct all of the ceremonies in the Washington, D.C. area. I wanted to become a member of the Honor Guard because I think it's a great honor. First, you have to be selected with the requirements to be in the Honor Guard. And then you have to go through three weeks of rigorous training and marching and standard proficiencies to get the Honor Guard tab. A soldier that wears the Honor Guard tab, it, it really says, I understand how to put my uniform together. I'm a disciplinarian. I'm a perfectionist and I understand and can execute drill and ceremony better than anybody in the United States Army. One of the biggest challenges of being a soldier in the Honor Guard would be keeping ceremonial composures while you're out there on your missions. You have to be very disciplined, you have to be very squared away because the whole world is basically looking at you. I think special traits that an Honor Guard soldier definitely has is they have to have a lot of pride in themselves and a pride in their organization. We realize that we represent not only the Army, but we represent our country when other dignitaries come to visit. It's hard. We expect perfection. We expect you to be self-motivated. 
We expect you to be self-critical. I want you to go try out to the specialty platoon, whether it's the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, our nation's foremost color guard, the drill team, the presidential salute gun battery, and caisson. That's where all good honor guard soldiers want to end up, is at one of those specialty elements. I'm First Sergeant Philip Lee Harrison. I'm a 19 Delta, and I wear the Mountain Tab. I'm Staff Sergeant Michael Bogdan. I'm a 19 Delta Cavalry Scout, and I wear the Mountain Tab. The only unit allowed to wear the, the Mountain Tab above its patch is the 10th Mountain Division. The history behind the 10th Mountain Division is unique. No other unit has been able to fight mountain warfare uh, with the effectiveness as the 10th Mountain Division. In 1943, the 10th Mountain Division came about. It was a specialized warfare group dealing with mountain warfare. And after World War II, it was deactivated, and then it was reactivated back in 1986 up here at Fort Drum, New York. The 10th Mountain Soldiers in today's Army are used for rapid deployment. Uh, due to our light infantry division status, uh, we are able to quickly deploy anywhere in the world. Boots on the ground is, is our main effectiveness in today's battle. Uh, we can get there quickly and we can overwhelm the opposition. Being a soldier in the 10th Mountain Division is a great experience. Uh, the training's awesome. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's exhilarating. Uh, it takes a lot of effort out of you. I volunteered to come to the 10th Mountain Division. Now, the reason I did is uh, I knew what I was in for. I knew that it was a very tough assignment. I knew that the soldiers were outstanding, a uh, lot of good training, a lot of good leadership, and I knew we'd be widely deployed. This is something I wanted to be a part of. It was a sense of pride. I wanted the accomplishment. I knew that if I wanted to go to the best place, 10th Mountain Division was the place to go. I spent half of my career with the 10th Mountain Division, and it is a great division to be a part of. I've learned a lot about myself, I've learned that uh, there's nothing I can't do. The training and the camaraderie, um, the tough assignments, it's something that I'll never forget. It's something I think any, anybody in the military, if they want to experience the, the toughest assignment, then 10th Mountain Division is it. I'm Sergeant First Class Lance Dement, I'm an 11 Bravo, and I have the President's 100 Tab. My name is Specialist Amanda Elfenboss, 91 Kilo, Armament Repair, and I have the President's 100 Tab. The President's 100 Tab dates back to the 1800s, and it, it's been a, a, always been a competitive marksmanship award. In order to earn the President's 100 Tab, or actually to be more accurate, to win the President's 100 Tab, you have to place in the top 100 competitors at the National Championship in the President's 100 match. Everyone is eligible to win the President's 100 tab. You can be in the military, a civilian, a junior shooter, a retired person, and females and males compete on the exact same level for all of the national championships and the President's 100. I always saw the top level marksmen were all President's 100 members. And that, to me, is kind of denotes that, hey, you, you want to be a part of this group, you're going to have to perform, you're going to have to do well. Personally, the biggest challenge for myself winning the President's 100 tab was keeping myself calm and composed during the President's 100 match. It's the first match at the Nationals, and it sets the tone for how you're going to do at the Nationals. You're all in. You're betting everything on every shot. Uh, one poor shot, one uh, lapse in concentration, and, and you're out. When I first made the President's 100, I was extremely happy. I've been working at it for three years at the national level and it's a match that it means a lot. Being a soldier that wears the President's 100 tab, a lot of times uh, people will ask me, you know, what is that, how did you earn that, or how did you get that, or what you, and it gives me a chance to introduce them to some competitive marksmanship that they may not have known about. I am 2nd Lieutenant Joseph Wingelmeyer, I am an infantry officer, and I have the Ranger tab. My name is Sergeant First Class Michael Dean. I'm an 11 Bravo and I have the Ranger tab. Prior to the Korean War, uh, to emulate the commandos in Great Britain, General Darby put together an elite group of uh, infantrymen and declared them the Rangers as uh, a homage to uh, Rogers Rangers in the uh, Revolutionary period. The Ranger School started back in the 50s. Uh, the first Ranger company, or the first Ranger training school, actually graduated in 1952. The things that you learn in Ranger School are small unit operations, starting at the squad level up to the platoon level. You'll learn the orders process, you'll learn raids, ambushes, um, but most importantly, you'll learn leadership skills uh, from individual 
traits or individual skills all the way up to platoon level skills that are going to help you in combat. Everyone knows how hard it is. Everyone knows how tough it is. You have instant credibility. You never have to have to uh, do anything but show your left shoulder to anyone who asks, you know, are you, are you qualified to be a leader of infantrymen? Because it is the premier leadership school in the United States Army. Ranger School took me out of my comfort level and then it proved to me that I can handle it and it actually extended my comfort level to a greater spectrum. Just finding out how far you can be pushed and still excel and still do your job. To earn the Ranger tab, basically it only takes heart. You just have to have the heart to go, you have the heart to stay with it, you have to have the heart to complete it. It's all about not quitting. All it takes is a, a mindset to, to, to just never quit. Being a Ranger is being a part of a brotherhood. It's a tight-knit community. It's almost like having an extended family away from home, especially when you are away from home deployed in combat. It's an automatic end. You automatically share stories. Um, and you know, hey, this guy's probably got my back. He's been to Ranger School. As a soldier, there's no better insurance than having a leader with a Ranger tab. My name is Major Aaron Titko. I'm a 21 Alpha, and I have the Sapper tab. I am Captain French Pope. I am a 21 Alpha combat engineer, and I have the Sapper tab. The term Sapper comes from a um, from back in back in medieval times when people would dig trenches to, in order to get artillery close to close to castles in order for them to destroy those fortifications. The trenches that were dug were called saps, and they were dug by people that were called sappers. Those were the first combat engineers. As a sapper, our, our area of expertise is mobility, to ensure the mobility of the unit. Sapper School is open to uh, all combat engineers and company grade uh, engineer officers. It's also open to uh, infantry, scouts, and other combat arms uh, individuals. The benefits of uh, being a sapper in, in the modern army is that uh, when another leader or another soldier looks at you, they know that you uh, have done the patrolling, you know that you're going to protect the soldier and you're going to lead from the front. I wanted to earn the sapper tab because it showed that I was a master of my craft. And as a combat engineer, it, it, it gives you a little bit of instant credibility when you walk into a room. To get the tab was a very proud moment in my life. Uh, it's a really a moment of realization that you know, I can do whatever I set myself out to do. When I see another soldier with a sapper tab, I know what I'm getting. I know that I'm getting a tested leader. I know that I'm getting a combat engineer that's an expert in his craft. And I know that I can depend on that individual. I tell any soldier that approaches me that wants to go to a sapper leader course that it's a very tough course, very rigorous training, and you need to be prepared mentally and both physically to, to go through the training. During the sapper tab, you got to go to the Sapper Leader course. You got to prove that you've got the physical and mental stamina and you have what it takes to master combat engineering skills. I'm Command Sergeant Major J.R. Stiegel and I have the Special Forces tab. My name is Master Sergeant John Matson. I'm an 18 Zulu and I have the Special Forces tab. Well, Special Forces were a unique development coming out of World War II. The uh, Office of Strategic Services employed teams behind enemy lines to train partisans to fight against the Germans in France and against uh, the fascist Italians in North Italy. In 1962, John F. Kennedy actually awarded the Green Beret to Special Forces. The Green Beret was a symbol of, of who we are. It, as said by President Kennedy, a symbol of excellence, a badge of courage, a mark of distinction. The Special Forces tab was created in 1983 and awarded to Special Forces graduates of this course by the Chief of Staff of the Army. Wearing the tab and the beret is an overwhelming sense of pride. You can't put into words how it makes you feel. Walking across the stage to get your green beret is an incredibly proud moment. It's something that you'll never forget. I know I certainly never will. When I was walking across the stage, I couldn't help but think of all the people who went before me, all the people who fought before me, and the huge responsibility that was on my shoulders to live up to their legacy. Earning the Special Forces tab and, and graduating from the Special Forces qualification course isn't just a physical endeavor. 
It requires, you know, intelligence and, and perseverance, both in an academic and a physical way. Um, understanding the world situation, developing an appreciation for another culture, learning to speak a second language, and all that in tune with the, the skills of being just a Special Forces warrior at heart. Personally, when I see another, another guy with an SF tab or a Green Beret, I know right then and there, that's a person I can rely on, that's a brother. Having a strong camaraderie and faith in your fellow SF team member is more than important, it's a necessity. Anybody who wants to be part of something bigger than themselves, who is truly interested in serving their nation every day, who will get the opportunity to visit foreign lands and uh, experience a life of adventure, should understand that Special Forces is, is the role, the job for them.